What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is Irie Reviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you go back to the comic book shop for or not. So make sure you subscribe to get more of these every week. Also, make sure you subscribe if you want to win the copy of Batman White Knight number one, signed by Sean Gordon Murphy. So that's a giveaway that we're doing, so make sure you subscribe, comment below, so that that way you have a chance to win. But we're going to talk about... Dark Horse's Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil number one. So this is a spin-off of the Black Hammer universe, and if you're not familiar with Black Hammer, it's written by, uh, you know, Jeff Lemire, and it had art by Dean Ormston, and it really kind of took the comic book world by storm, telling you a story that isn't often seen. You know, oftentimes when we have the heroes fighting these giant mega villains, and they kind of blast off into the other quadrants of the universe, it's the it's the villains that aren't necessarily taken, you know, it's the, the heroes get to stay around, but in this case, what happens when all those heroes sacrifice themselves, and where do they go? So now that we've actually taken a look at the Black Hammer, you know, universe and the various heroes and how they've kind of survived ten years uh, being isolated from Spiral City, we get to take a look at what happens during those ten years when Lucy Weber, the daughter of the Black Hammer, goes hunting for her father. So let's just dive right into the story. The way that we see this, Lucy Weber is actually investigating her father's, you know, villains. And, you know, she's made she's found access to her father's former lair the black hammer kind of like cave i would so to speak uh, and she's got a list of who she really needs to interact with in order to find the whereabouts of one of black hammer's most sinister villains sherlock frankenstein so when she goes down the list she starts dealing with henchmen and the other people that sherlock frankenstein really kind of, uh, you know, introduced the, the people that he had in his employ in order to do these kind of things. And Sherlock Frankenstein's a relatively interesting character, according to this book. There's no real telling how old he is. You know, he didn't really make an, uh, an appearance until, like, the early 1900s in London. And then he's kind of succeeded ever since then at the same age, or at least the same kind of look, which makes him a particularly interesting character. So when we actually see Lucy Weber kind of going forward, she ends up at this, uh, you know, the prison where they're going to hold all these superhumans, these meta and she runs into Warden Wing, who's kind of like a bird man, kind of like in the same Hawkman vein, but he's very old at this point in time. He's a legacy character. He's hung out with her parents and her grandparents at that point in time. There's also the Conquistador, the, the you know, so Concrete Quistador, I guess, is what they're really going for, and he's one of the guards of the prison, kind of, you know, holding on to these various villains that have, you know, they're just too dangerous to let back, into, back out into the public, and it's a private held entity, so they can kind of do what they want. So as we kind of spiral down into the deepest darkest depths of this prison, we actually run into this super gigantic kind of robotic structure with this really kind of pinkish brain matter kind of place, and that is mectoplasm. And what we find out is that, you know, Sherlock Frankenstein actually took this child, or the disembodied spirit of this child, and kind of implanted it into this mechanized armor and had him do these various evil things. And Eugene didn't necessarily want to do all of them, but he fills Lucy in on a lot of the information, gives her a lot of backstory, and we find out more about mectoplasm and his history with Sherlock Frankenstein. After this kind of goes by, she doesn't really get any valuable information, she makes her way past another cage, where she runs into Grim Jim, who actually has the most helpful piece of information she's run across so far. And when he was there, he was looting various things while the anti-god was raging across Spiral City and the heroes were trying to take him out, but he did see Sherlock Frankenstein there. Was he there in some sort of evil capacity? Not really. However, he was manning this giant robotic structure towards the fight as if he was going to participate and, you know, defend Spiral City alongside these heroes. And then everybody was gone in a flash of light. So the way Grim Jim sees it, if Sherlock Frankenstein's anywhere, he's where the heroes are at. And that's where we kind of wrap up this first issue. You know, we get that backstory, we get that understanding of who Sherlock Frankenstein is, and really what this is, this is, if you were to think about it, it's kind of like a dossier, it's a diary, it's a report that a reporter put together, Lucy, on the history of her father's villains, as well as the pathway, the, the journey that she takes in order to find all this information and make her way into this universe where the, the heroes of Black Hammer have really been stranded for the last decade or so. So I really like the way that this story is developed. It, it's a really complimentary piece. You know, if it was to stand alone on, you know, it would really require a lot of exposition, a lot of backstory. But as a compliment to Black Hammer, I think that it's fantastic. Once we talk about David Rubin's art, David Rubin's art, that's pretty great too. You know, you've got Ether, and there's a bunch of different stuff that he's worked on in the past, and it really lends itself to this kind of style. It's not like not quite Dean Ormston's art, which is really the foundation for Black.
Black Hammer, but it fits within that kind of universe and it gives you a very different kind of feel. I like that it works into a, a different style of time. It makes it feel separated from where the main, main title is taking place. Overall, Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil number one is a great book. It's a really good complement to Black Hammer, so I definitely recommend it for anybody that is interested or is, you know, already reading Black Hammer. I already recommend Black Hammer to everybody that I possibly can, but if you're not reading Black Hammer, I would say grab Black Hammer first before jumping into Sherlock Frankenstein. The way it's structured, I believe it's going to set up so that that way it's a trade paperback. So, I mean, you could grab Volume 1 and Volume 2 of Black Hammer and then go straight to Sherlock Frankenstein, and you're not really going to miss any beats at this point in time, but it's definitely not user-friendly from the start. It gives you a little bit of exposition, but not quite enough to make it a standalone kind of piece that you could just enjoy on its own. But those are my ideas, and those are my comments on Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil number one, but I want to know what you guys think too, so hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start the conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.